Hello again, everybody. This is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. Well, we're going to do our 18th session today on uh, 1 Timothy, verse by verse. And we're stopping there uh, uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 3 uh, and talking about proving and then talking about spiritual growth, the different levels of spiritual growth, which we're talking about, and comparing them the natural to the spiritual. Uh, we, we're dealing with babies and children and preteens and teenagers and mature adults. And we're going through this and actually uh, we are slowly moving through the process of talking about the characteristics of some of the, uh, the mature people now. And uh, got only so far. So we're going to do that. Then after we're done with that, either in this session or the next session, we're going to be speaking uh, to the, um, if I can use this term, the test that I'm going to give, the proving test, I call it, where you go through, you're honest with yourself, you go through and answer the questions, you mark it uh, down. We have a, a zero, th zero through 10 we use, and uh, you go, go through that, and then you mark it down, and uh, what you feel, where you feel you're at, you're honest about it. Say, I'm, I'm average, so I put a five, you know, that type of thing. And then at the end, you add it all up, and that comes out to a certain level. And uh, we've we made out a certain level where where you'll find out whether you're you're a baby or you know you're a you know a child, preteen, teen, or a full grown adult. So it'll be fun when you get to that part. But right now, we're doing this other part. I wanted to pick up where I left off in my last session, which was talking about mature uh, Christians, because there's a lot of attributes they have, that they've developed over the years. One of them is the ability to work with others, the ability to work with others. So um, you can take a, you notice a mature person, uh, they have the ability to work with anybody, really, if they have to. They know how to handle people. They've learned communication skills. They've learned... Um, hospitality skills, and they're able to work with others. Uh, they're also able to lead others with excellence. That is a something that has to be developed. You have to learn how to lead, lead others. And I think the other side of that is they learn how to submit to others the right way too. Both. You lead and submit, and you have the ability to do that with the greatest of ease. All right? Uh, they're excellent communicators. And another, another uh, uh, thing they have is they understand the importance of church, all right? They, they love church. They understand the importance of church. It's not about just the Internet for them. They understand the importance of the local church, and they understand the importance of the fivefold ministry. They love the things of God. They just, that's a, you know, that's, the, the things of God is everything to them, pretty much. And the, and the rest of the stuff, they don't really put a high value on it, though you can have hobbies and stuff. I'm not saying that, but the, that's the bottom line. They love the Word of God. They love the Spirit of God and the move of the Spirit of God. Uh, they can move in the Spirit excellently. They're, they even, uh, at times, uh, well, I guess you could say they excel at that. Now, even in severe trials, a mature person will not be moved, and they will be strong in faith until the thing's over with. Um, the, as the Bible says, they, they have that trait of being a, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Uh, they don't overestimate Satan's power. A mature person knows their rights and privileges in Christ, knows their authority, they don't run around going, the devil, the devil, the devil, warfare, warfare, warfare. Whenever you hear that, every time they preach, they're talking about warfare. Uh, they're, they're, you know, Especially in a lot of this prophetic movement today, you just hear it over and over. It's warfare. It's the devil's attacking this. It's this kind of spirit and that kind of thing and this thing. And that's all you hear that, you know, I'm going through warfare. Oh, this warfare today. Man, I've been in warfare. You know, if you're a mature person, you don't go through warfare all the time. You might get attacked, but it don't last long. Okay, that's a sign of maturity. And um, we, we, I'm, I'm talking about spiritual things. We know, and when you're a mature person, you can handle that, and you take authority over that, and you push through that very quickly. 
and uh, that is a trait of a mature Christian. Um, they don't overestimate Satan's power because he doesn't really have any. Okay, they know who they are in Christ. They know how to be led by the Spirit. They're not flaky and say, God told me this, God told me that, when he didn't. They're not uh, saying, uh, God told me this, and or they're going to do this in Jesus' name, even though, you know, see, that's really easy for anybody to do. God told me. Okay, well, if God told me, then, I, you know, what are you going to say to that? If God really told you, great. But if God didn't tell you and you're using that uh, to get your way or to do your own thing or whatever, well, that's not, that's immaturity, see? So a true mature Christian is led by the Spirit. I mean, they hear from God. They're directed by the Spirit. They're in His perfect will because they're, they're walking that way or they're getting there. So that's important. Now, a mature person will not make any more major blunders, okay, when it comes from hearing from God. They're... They made their blunders, if, and they take a, they take enough time when they they're up against a major issue or a major decision to hear from God accurately. It's very important because if you're immature and you wait, as an example, I'll just give you an example. An immature pastor can say, "Okay, I have faith. I'm going to exercise my faith and get this building over here." So they just do it. They say that's faith. A mature pastor would say, I'm going to pray about this, and I'm going to wait on God to get what he wants me to do. And if he tells me to do that, fine. If not, I'm going to do whatever he tells me. That, that is the difference between success and failure, my friend. It's simply hearing what God wants you to do, because when God leads you or he guides, he'll provide. Okay? So uh, they don't make these major blunders. I've all Everybody's made them. I mean, I've made them. But, uh, but hopefully my, it, here in my past, you know, I moved to the wrong city. I, I went to the wrong church. I, whatever, it, it could be a thousand different things. Not knowing, sincere, yes, but still it was a blunder, you know. Okay, that, in mean, a mature person, that, that time has come to an end. They're moving wrong because they know their stuff, right? They can be counted on. Man, you can give them something to do, and you don't even have to be concerned about it. I've got people in my church where I don't even get concerned. If I leave, I don't even think about it. I, I don't. I, I mean, they've never let me down. Uh, they're just good at it. And so I, that's a wonderful thing when, you're, when you have a staff like that, when you've got people around you, volunteer people even, that will handle things with excellence. They don't, they don't panic. They're not freaking out if something happens. And, and there's been some things that have happened to some of them that while I was gone that were pretty tough, but they handle it pretty well. That's maturity when that starts happening. Uh, one of the things about a mature person is their word is their bond. Their word is their bond. Man, if they say something, they're not liars, okay? A lot of Christian liars out there. I'll be at your services every week, okay? When somebody tells me, I will be at your services every week or almost every week, and then they never come. They're lying. What they should say is uh, whatever. They should say uh, nothing, or they should say, well, I'm going to try to come when I can. I'm going to pray about it. And, and uh, you know, but, but to commit to something and then don't do it, that's a lie. And, and people do that all the time. I will be there at this time, and they're not on time. I will do this, but they don't do it. <coughs> I'm, I, I love this church. <coughs> I'm going to come here. You can count on me three months later, two, two weeks later, you never see them again. There's so many liars in the body of Christ that way. It's just ridiculous. And so a mature person won't do that. Man, if I give you my word on something, I guarantee you, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to keep that. And if there's a reason why I can, I'm going to call you and talk to you about it. Um, but I don't make commitments and stuff unless I'm going to keep them. Um, most, I'm just really careful about that. They're excellent in the gifts of the Spirit. And for all of those people out there that say, I don't really know anything about the gifts of the Spirit, well, that's an immaturity. That's, that's going to hinder you, and we'll talk about that. You've got to, you've got to study that. Uh, you can leave them in charge. I already mentioned that. Um, esteem others more important than themselves. Uh, uh, mature people look at you know, other people's thing and other people's growth is what's important. What floats their boat in a bishop that's mature is seeing people grow, seeing people get saved, seeing people get filled with the Holy Spirit, seeing people get healed and all that. But really, the, the best thing is watching their own 
bishops, young bishops and leaders and, and people in the congregation grow into what they're supposed to be doing and be successful. That is really the, the uh, maturity. It's not all about me. We're a team. I can't do everything, don't want it. At this age, I'd rather have other people do a lot of this see, and, and watch them develop. Amen. Uh, they, they're able to rejoice when others get blessed instead of get jealous. There's a rejoicing. There's a thankfulness. And you can tell it's sincere. I love when people get blessed. I just, I, I hope want everybody to be blessed. Um, they have their appetites under control. They keep their temples in order, you know. They're not, you know, I don't want to go into all that, but you know what I'm saying. Um, they can't be bought. Uh, somebody can dangle money in front of them or something like that to get them out of the will of God and they won't bite on it. You can be, they can be trusted. That's a big deal, being able to trust somebody. Uh, the mature persons would literally rather probably die and just go home to be with Jesus than do anything to, to split a church or hurt, hurt a church or, or hurt other people. Uh, they understand the value of relationships and understand the value of people. They don't try to throw and cast their own vision within the context of the church. Uh, maybe they have a, their own ministry, that's fine, but in the context of the church, they're not trying to cast their own vision in the middle of it when it's not the church's vision. They understand that. They, if they happen to be a bishop, a traveling minister, or a pastor, they, they learn minister etiquette. They're excellent at it. They understand it. They understand about writing letters. They understand about communication. They understand about, you know, how to, uh, what to preach, what not to preach in people's churches, so on and so forth, things you should and shouldn't do in prayer lines. They understand all that stuff. Uh, and so on and so forth that way. Um. There you go. That's 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 those are some of the traits of a mature person, and uh, so there you go. Now, with that being said, we're going to do this proving test. Now, I'm going to go through each one. And what you need to do is you need to get yourself a pen and some paper, and you just you just uh, the best thing you could probably do is is write down one, two, three. We're going to go through. I believe, if I remember right, it's eighty questions. Yeah, eighty. So you're going to have 80 questions, and then you're going to have a response that you write down. And the response will be between 0 and 10. Most of the time, it will be 10 being, you know, I'm perfect at it. Uh, they really got, you know, I mean, the best you can be. Uh, and 0 being, I don't even understand anything about this, you know. And to, for this to work, you're going to have to be totally honest. And this is something that I find lacking. Honesty is the best policy. And also, I want to say it this way. If you're totally honest with yourself, it'll be easier for you to be totally honest with other people. And I'm telling you, I took this test and I was surprised. I'm not as mature as I thought I was. And so, um, but I was honest about it. I said, okay, this area I need work. You're going to find areas that you need work on. Nothing wrong with that. We're human beings. We're all growing different levels. So don't let it drag you down when you find out, my gosh, maybe I need to really work on this area. I'm not as mature as I thought I was. Don't let that shock you. There are, aren't that many mature, totally mature people in the body of Christ. Just the way it is. I can talk to some of the greatest preachers in America. They'll tell you the same thing. We work with people. We know and realize it, it takes a long time, and we're we're never stop. We never stopping. See, I'm sick. I've been doing it 51 years, or excuse me, 41 years, maybe 42 now. Close. I don't know. I don't remember, but a long time now, walking with the Lord, and I've developed. But man, I tell you what, there's certain areas I'm still developing in, and you are too. So take it like that, okay? If we don't finish it in this session, because I'm only going to go 30 minutes, we'll finish it in the next. But you write down, and you, you, you listen to it, you take a moment, you really pray about it. See, this is a thing, most of the time our first thought about it is really the right thought. I'm average at that. Just, and then you write down a five, you know, and just be honest. And then when we get to the end, we'll add them all up, and I'll give you the results, okay? So the first one... 
we're going to go from 0 to 10. 0 being, know nothing about that, 5 average, 10 totally got it together. Sometimes it'll go the other way, and I'll explain that when, when we have that happen. Don't, don't worry about that right now. Okay, uh, and so on. Question 1. How would you rate your biblical knowledge? And I'll, at a, on, a, on a scale of zero, I don't know anything about the Bible, to 10, I'm an expert. Let me give it to you this way. If you were the only person alive on planet Earth who was a Christian and had a Bible, how could you help other people? Do you have, you, do you have a full knowledge of God's Word? What would you rate yourself? as far as the knowledge of God's Word. Just be honest about it. On a, a zero being I don't know anything, 10 being I'm an expert, I'm a master teacher, I'm a, a scholar, you know, that type of thing. Question two, how would you, and then you put your, excuse me, then you would put your, your number next year to, to, to number one, okay? Number two, how would you rate yourself on doing uh, on doing what you know? Doing the Word. How would you rate yourself on doing the Word? Putting what you learned into practice. Putting what you learned into practice. How would you rate yourself? Zero being I don't do anything. Ten being I, I'm perfect at it, basically. Or all points in between. That's question number two. How would you rate yourself on doing what you know? Question number three. How is your prayer life? Zero. I don't have any prayer life. 10, my prayer life is fantastic. It's, it's just what God wants. It's good. As good as it can get. Okay? Be honest. And then write the number down by the number three. Number Question number four. How is your relationship with the Father? Now, the reason I ask this is because many people have a relationship with Jesus, but because of bad upbringings and, and bad father situations, they, they tend to stay away from understanding or thinking about the father. How is your relationship with the father? All right. Zero. I don't have any. Ten. Excellent. You know, I, I couldn't be any better. Question five. How is your relationship with the son, Jesus Christ? You may think that's kind of an odd question. Zero. I don't have any. Ten. The best. Okay, but it's important. There's a reason. There's a method to the madness. So give you know, all right. Question number six: How is your relationship on on a scale of zero to ten? Zero being I don't have any to ten with the Holy Ghost, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Can you see that? Okay. Question number seven: Do you know what your personal ministry is? Zero, I have no idea. Ten, I know exactly what it is. I'm flowing in the fullness of it. Okay. Question number ten, seven again. Do you know what your personal ministry is? Because everybody has one. You have to be honest. I don't understand that. I don't know what that is. Zero, all the way up in between to ten at the highest. <laughs> Question eight. How would you rate your mind renewal? How would you rate, it, rate, rate your mind renewal? By that I mean how how does your mind think? I mean, do you think, do you have the mind of Christ? Are you constantly, can you tell what is of God, what's not of God, so on and so forth? How are your emotions? You know, do you have the ability to uh, discern what's right and wrong, so on? So, zero, I just never even really started in the Bible. I don't know anything. Or to 10, I've got it down. Man, I, 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 I you know, I feel that that's my, the strength of my life or whatever, the strongest thing. I don't know how you do it, but anywhere in between. Okay. Question nine. How do you feel you handle your emotions? I'll be honest. Zero. Terrible. Zero. Oh my God. I just, I can't handle my emotions. I have I have no ability to do that. I fly off all the time. I just it's terrible. To ten, got them totally under control. Okay. Question number ten. On a scale of zero to ten. Now listen to this. On a scale of zero to ten. 
you're going to have to do it the other way this way on a scale of zero. Zero being the best on this question. In other words, do I struggle with doubt? Zero. I struggle with it all the time. Okay. Ten. I never struggle with it. Okay. So, or any, any place in between. So, zero to ten again. I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear, but you understand. Do I struggle? Do you struggle with doubt? Zero? Yes. Yes. Ten? Never. Right? Uh, and then all points in between. So you write down next to ten your number. Eleven. How would you rate, on a scale of zero to ten, your ability to believe God for healing? Zero, I don't know anything about that. I've never done that before. Ten, yeah, man, I walk in divine health all the time. I just got that down. I think it's perfect. Or anywhere between. Okay? Getting this, aren't you? So we're moving along here. You're starting to see how this works. Question 12. How, what, what? From zero to ten, how would you rate your ability to believe God for finances? Zero, don't know nothing about that. Ten, man, yeah, I'm just, I'm I'm living in prosperity. I believe God for, to, you know, I have my ministries going. I can do this. It just it flows so easily for me, and any anywhere in between, five average, you know. All right, thirteen. On a scale of zero to ten, how would you rate your your you, you getting answers to prayer? Zero, never get any answers to prayer. Ten, get them all, or anywhere in between, and be honest about it. Okay, just be honest about that. Question number fourteen. On a scale of zero to ten, how would you rate yourself when it comes to understanding and using right words? Zero, I don't know anything about that. You know, one or two, I'm terrible at it. That's a big issue with me. You know, to 10, got my words totally under control. I am like the son of God that way, you know. And then you write your number down. 15, how would you rate on a scale of zero to 10 your reliability? When, when somebody asks you to do something, how reliable are you? Got to be honest on that. Uh, zero, just terrible. Ten, always reliable, 100% of the time, or anywhere in between. Now, you'll find out on most of these, most people will be an average, or there'll be a seven, maybe a, a four, you know what I'm saying, and that's how you're, you're doing yourself. You're not just writing 10s all the time. I don't know anybody who gets 10s all the time, including myself. Uh, that That's a little ego <laughs> and something like that. So you got to be honest, you know, nobody has arrived totally, but you may have some 10s. I know I, I, I gave myself some 10s, but most of the time it's not quite there, you know. We're still growing in areas. 16, on a scale of 0 to 10, how are you being on time? 0, never on time. You know, one or two, I'm terrible at it. That's something I really need to work on. Four, five average, up to seven, eight, ten. Okay, so 16, how how are you being on time? Question 17, how are you on ordering your life? Do you feel your life is in order on a scale of zero to ten? Zero, my life is totally out of control. There's no order in my life at all. Anywhere up to average, you know, or do you excel at that to the point where you'll put down 10 or somewhere up there? Order in my life. As an example, you know, this is this is an area I'm working on. I didn't get a 10 on that. I'll tell you that right now. But I could get, I, I, I would have to say my, my, uh, my, my son-in-law and uh, Melissa's uh, uh, husband, so they're pretty close. So, you know, so we all working on something, right? Okay, so 17 is how would you rate yourself from 0 to 10 on ordering your life? And that, that ordering your life is like, you know, um, you know, just having things together, you know, uh, uh, you know, knowing at work you do an excellent job, you, you're organized, you're doing these things. You're able to do, pay your bills right, do things right, 
you, you got your marriage in order, everything's in order. You just, you know, write down what you think about that. Okay, number 18, how are you on dressing biblically? That's an interesting question from a scale of 0 to 10. 0, I don't dress very well. I dress skanky. I should not wear low-cut tops, but I do. I just know that. Or all the way up to 10, I got this down. I realize importance of dress. I realize, you know, and I'll just leave that up to you to decide what that means. But 0 to 10, how are you on dressing biblically from a biblical standpoint? Interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. Some of these questions are. Okay, 19. How important is marriage in making you happy if you're married? Now, if you're not married, you also answer the question. In other words, whether you're married or not, your idea here is how much happiness would marriage give me? On a scale of 0 to 10, 0, I don't think it would make me happy at all. To 10, it would really make it would be the greatest thing ever. And marriage can make me, you know, the happiest person in the world. Okay? All right. That's number 19. How important is marriage in making you happy? Number 20. How faithful are you in all things? Are you a faithful person? Zero. Never. Ten. I'm faithful in whatever I, whatever I put my hand to. Or all points in between, right? 21, on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being all the time, 10 being never, do you tend to get hurt easily on a scale of 0 to 10? Be honest now. This The only way this works is if we're really honest with ourselves. So take a moment and think about it, and then write your number down. 0 to 10. Do you tend to get hurt easily? Zero all the time, just every all the time. Ten, never. Twenty-two. Twenty-two is a good one. You have to think about it for a minute. How quick can you really forgive? Zero takes me forever, maybe never. Ten, just immediately. Zero to ten. Again, that's 22. Is that right? Let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, 20. How, how quick can you forgive? Have you developed in the area of forgiving? Now, be honest about that because a lot of times people will eventually forgive, but it might take them three or four days, you know. So that would, depending on how you felt about that, that would be maybe a five or maybe, you know, less. It's up to you to decide this. You're the only one who can. Or, yeah, man, I can forgive very easily. It's the easiest thing in the world for me. Ten, you know. But um, So, be honest. 23. Do you let, on a scale of 0 to 10, do you let what people say about you influence you? Now, let me explain that a little bit. Do, you know, I'm not talking about, we all, like, we all like when people like us and people acknowledge that we exist and that, and that we do good. And, and I'm not talking about that. But when people criticize you, does that influence you in any way? How bad does it influence you? When people praise you, does it influence you sometimes in a, in a, in a huge way? Because um, a mature person doesn't let the, those things influence them very much. They like it when somebody says nice things about you. They, they might, might not like it when somebody criticizes you. But it does not influence what we do, how we minister, or any of that kind of stuff. It doesn't throw us off emotionally. So a scale of zero being I'm just all over the place on that, 10 being I got that under control, and anywhere in between. That's number 23. Number 24, how are you on... Uh, Okay, how are you on a scale of 0 to 10 on taking on new tasks and learning to make it work? In other words, on a scale of 0, I, I can't stand new, doing new things. Just don't do it. To 10, I love taking on tasks. I'm great at taking them on, learning new things, and making it work. Or, or any point in between. All right. 
So we stopped at number 24. I'm out of time. In our next session, we will go for the rest of them. And then we will show you to, you can add them up and get your total and find out where you really are from a spiritual standpoint. I love you. Remember to go to our website, faithalifefellowship.org. That's faithalifefellowship.org. If this video has been a blessing to you, please share it. And that's the way they get around, you know. Remember this, feed your faith, starve your doubts to death. Until next time, God bless you.